How many fans do you need in the stands in order for sports betting to thrive? Is it better to have fewer? Uh, I don't know that it matters, really. I mean, we're a mobile app, so whether you're sitting in the stands or whether you're sitting at home watching it on TV or wherever you are, you can always access our app. So um, I don't really think it matters too much. Uh, I think it's just the important thing is that sports are played and uh, everybody do does it in a safe way and the games can continue. Jason, what was it like in the early months of the pandemic, obviously, when people could not bet on sports? Uh, anecdotally, I posted a picture of my teenage sons playing ping pong, and one of my friends said, what's the spread? Can I bet on it? There was obviously appetite, but they couldn't do it. Well, it's funny you mentioned ping pong. Table tennis was actually, at one point, our number one betting sport. Uh, so it was one of the few things going on. I guess it's a sport that lends itself a little better to social distancing, since you're on opposite sides of the table. Uh, but at one point, that was our biggest. Esports has been huge for us. That has grown tremendously. Obviously, people can can play esports without having, uh, you know, to be near each other. So that helps. And you know, there were other things as uh, you know, we kind of got creative. Things we did for you know, politics, uh, TV shows. Not not anything where you could wager money, but free to enter pools and things like that. Um, you know, so we, we did a lot of things, and I think the biggest beneficiary overall was esports because even after we started to see traditional sports like the PGA Tour and now basketball, you know, MLB, NHL, football come back, esports has continued to maintain a lot of the growth it saw. And, um, you know, esports was tiny going into this whole thing, and now it's a pretty substantial product for us. What are your expectations for volume, though, with no Big Ten or Pac 12 games happening, Jason? How do you get around that? Well, we were very, uh, you know, cautious with our, our forecasting. So, you know, when we issued guidance at our last quarterly earnings call, we did not actually include college sports of any kind in our forecast. So um, we feel like, you know, if there are games that, you know, look like they're hopefully going to be played and uh, they can be done safely, that that's some upside for us. But uh, we're not counting on it. And, you know, I think for, for everybody, really, the more important thing is, just to see sports, whether it's the NFL, college football, anything else, uh, to see them successfully managed through this gives everyone, I believe, confidence or would give everyone confidence that as a country uh, and really, you know, globally that we figured out how to live in, in the world of coronavirus. Um, I think it's a very, you know, big sort of litmus test. And I think if there's a setback, people look at it and say, you know, geez, we still haven't figured this thing out. And I think if it goes well, it'll inspire a lot of confidence amongst consumers, not just in the realm of sports. Mm. The relationship with Michael Jordan, how do you capitalize on that? How, how is it progressing right now, other than having the most famous athlete in the world connected to your brand? Well, I think really, you know, it, as much as Michael has accomplished a ton as an athlete, He's perhaps accomplished even more as a businessman, as a brand marketer. Um, I don't think there's anybody who debate that he's one of the preeminent geniuses of our, our generation, our last several generations, uh, when it comes to, to business acumen and brand marketing. So, you know, what we're looking forward to is a lot of what Michael's built and the various brands that he's gotten behind. Uh, you know, that has really uh, resonated with us is, is similar to what we're trying to do when we build our brand and build our business. And so we're looking forward to getting advice from him on how he thought about that and how it applies to what we're doing. And I think he's going to be a great addition in the boardroom. Can you give us anything concrete about plans? Are we going to see him anytime soon, Jason? Well, nature of this wasn't meant to be, you know, marketing or promotion. It was really to tap Michael's business mind. So, um, you know, we're going to hopefully get a lot of great value behind the scenes that will show up uh, in our product, in our strategy. But uh, right now, there's no plans to have him, you know, do anything beyond that. I think that's really the focus. There's been a lot of talk when we talk about the equity markets and the action that we've seen that people who could not bet on sports decided to try their hand in the equity markets, obviously the Robin Hood investors. Are you concerned that some of them might have got hooked on this whole equity thing and won't come back to your business? Well, I think that much like we see in our own business where we have different products, daily fantasy sports, sports betting, iGaming, uh, there's a lot of overlap and incrementality when people try new things. And, um, you know, I'm sure if there are people that got into the stock market, then uh, there's an opportunity for them to do both. And, uh, you know, it's hard for me to comment because I don't actually know any numbers of people on Robinhood. Um, you know, we're not obviously privy to that. But I can tell you from what we're seeing, um, the numbers are just skyrocketing right now. So 
uh, if there is any, you know, uh, overlap, it certainly doesn't seem to be cannibalizing. It seems to be adding incrementality. And, um, you know, right now, I think, is one of the, the, you know, most exciting times we've ever had in terms of just, yeah. you know, record-setting numbers and beating all expectations. You were early in getting in on the SPAC uh, extravaganza, if you like. Are you pleased, looking back, that you went public this way? Or is there anything you would have changed about the process or would change now? Uh, you know, I think it's been a, a really great uh, start for us as a public company. And um, I think that while it's still early innings, uh, we feel very validated in both the decision to go public and the way we did it. Uh, you know, the people that we worked with uh, from that SPAC, Diamond Eagle, primarily Harry Sloan and his team, have been great to work with. Harry's a board member and has continued to contribute in each board meeting he attends. So we're pretty happy with it. And uh, I think, you know, right now it seems like uh, it was a great decision for us to go public. So hopefully that'll continue.